Welcome to Short Shot Archery, and today we are doing step two of how to make a string a single colored string. So, now that we have our string jig laid out and all set up to our correct size so we make the correct length string for our bow, now it is time to choose your bow string. Now this is an important step because it is going to be the foundation of the string. It is the string. After that, all you have to do is cover the string or certain sections of the string with serving. But first, we have to choose our bow string. Now let's pick out our bow string. Now, as you can see here, there's two different sp size spools. There are these small spools. These smaller spools are serving. This goes on top of your bow string. Um, for the most part, I have two kinds of serving, um, halo and power grip. Um, I number them in order to keep track of the thickness of the strand. Um, for bowstring, these larger spools, um, this is BCYX. The strand size doesn't change, um, at least for the BCYX. Now, if you bought a different type of BCY bowstring, they make other uh, types, um, the string size could vary some, but uh, for this, it's all the same, unless you're talking about servings. But right now, we're going to focus on bowstring. So my favorite type of bowstring, as you can see, is the BCYX. I have four spools of it, two whites, um, like a like a bright red, a blue, and then this uh, like darker, like a forest green. Um, BCY makes a ton of different colors. BCY also makes a ton of different types of bowstring. So there will be other types of bowstring that BCY makes available that may work better, say, with your compound bow or more design maybe for your traditional bow. Um, you will have to do some research. As a Olympic recurve shooter, um, I find BCYX to be the best type of bowstring for your bow. So. Now that we have that squared away, we're going to go and pick what color we want. Um, for this, I'm going to go and do blue. It's going to stand out really nicely, and you, as the viewer, are going to be able to see it a whole lot easier. Well, maybe besides the red. The red is pretty bright, but uh, I think the white and the green may blend in a little bit too much based on the background, so the blue is going to stand out really well. So we're going to take the blue, take it out of its wrapper, and we're going to start attaching this to the string jig. Now we're down at the far end, uh, technically the right hand side for me. Now where you start, um, either left or right, doesn't really matter. Um, it's just a matter of being consistent. Personally, if you're at your home uh, string jig, which you should be, um, most of the time you wouldn't be making these somewhere else unless it's at like a friend's house or something. But um, always start in the same you know, always start on the same side, the same way. Again, archery, consistency, string making, you want consistency, so always do the same thing. So I always start the same way. Gonna get my spool, BCYX. Gonna go and find the end right here. Look at that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna unravel some, take the end, and we're going to tie it to this post. Down at the bottom, um, you can technically do like halfway, but uh, you know, near the bottom, make your standard uh, knot. So got our half knot, and then we can technically throw another knot on top of that. Look at that. That's pretty much not going anywhere. If you want, you can go and like probably twist it around twice and tie it again. Um, this is going to be removed at some point but it's going to be in uh, another step, not in this step. So, tie it again. You don't have to have beautiful knots. This is just holding this in place so it doesn't slide. So, when I pull, nice and stiff. Good. Perfect. So, the next thing we're going to do is start going around this entire string jig. Okay, so now that we're attached to our jig, <laughs> we uh, are going to lay out our string. Now, um, this is something that's very important, and 
it may take um, a couple tries on you know, your part if you try this at home, or it might take a little bit of research based on the string material you use. Now for me, since I'm using BCYX, and given the fact that I'm using pin knocks that have a small throat at the end of the knock, um, if you're using a bigger knock, say like a G knock um, or an M knock, um, you would need uh, more strands in your string in order for it to fit correctly or a thicker center serve. Um, we'll get more into that as we go, but on the bowstring part, not the center serve, on the bowstring part, I go for a 20 strand string. Um, in the past I have done 22 strands. Um, it's a little bit of slower, it's a bit slower of a string at 22 strands and you have to cut down your center serve in order for your arrows to click on properly and you know release easily. So we're doing 20 strands of the BCYX. Now if you bought a different uh, type of BCY string material you may need more or probably less strands um, since X is actually a very uh, thin but extremely strong uh, bowstring material. Now, this string we're making is going to be 20 strands, but we are going to make it 22 because in step three we'll actually be cutting off two strands. Um, it's going to make complete sense when we get to that step and actually do it, but um, for right now, Bear with me, you're going to see uh, how this magic is going to, uh, to work because it's really cool and really effective um, what happens when you have those extra two strands in there. Let's start. Tied, we're going to go in front of the pole. So this pole on this side is facing me, or technically you when you do this at home. Go around, and we're going to go all the way down that way all the way down to the last pull on the opposite side. And we're coming back. So this is now pass number one. Each side of the string has one strand. Now, since we're making a 20 strand string and we need to add 22 strands, each side is going to have 11 strands. Let's go for pass number two. Now, another note, since we're on now pass number two, for somebody first starting out, you may want to mark you know, your starting pole either with you know, a Sharpie and just write number one on it, or uh, you'll put a piece of like tape on it, like red tape, electrical tape, just to indicate, oh, this is where I need to start and stop at. So every time I reach this pole, each side has one more strand because when I hit here now, now both sides have two strands. So let's continue. We have uh, quite a few strands to go. It looks like we have all the strands we need, but we should check. If you have two hands available, it's a lot easier. So we're just going to uh, count. Ten, and then down here is number eleven. So yes, we have eleven strands on this side, and eleven strands on this side. To make this twenty two strand string that we're going to cut two strands off and make it 20 you need 11 per side not 22 because that makes a 44 strand string and we don't want a 44 strand string there is probably not an arrow in this world besides something custom made that will fit that so as you can see I have nice uh, you know lines they all sit just above each other there's not really a lot of overlapping I like to do this just for the sake of keeping everything you know, consistent, everything in line, nothing's going to get tangled up. Um, if, if they were all meshed together, 
in, at this process, they're going to be a real mess by the time we get to actually twisting them into a string. So I just like to line up all my individual bowstring strands. Uh, now, we're on this end, we got to go and tie it off. So what we're going to do is, we're going to wrap it around, we're going to go down, we're going to give ourselves some extra. We're going to grab our knife and cut. Once we cut this, there's no going back. So you definitely want to make sure you have all the uh, all the strands you need on your string. So that's cut. It's a done deal. Now we're going to, again, tie this one to the bottom here. Um, you can tie the two together if you want. Um, whatever uh, works for you. This uh, string just needs to be tied to this inner post here in order to uh, make this work. So now that we're tied, um, it's fairly tight. Um, you have uh, a couple of options, or two options. You can either leave it like this and go to the next step, or what I like to do is I will loosen it up here, pull it back, and then tighten it, just to get them, get them a little tighter. Um, it doesn't have to be incredibly tight, but you shouldn't have a lot of slack in it, or you're gonna, you may get ripples into your uh, string when you put it together. Okay, so that concludes step two. You now have, uh, you know, the basis of a bowstring. You have the bowstring itself. Step three, we're going to be working on adding serving to the ends to create at least one of the loops in step three. Um, it's going to be a big step, so stay tuned.